Division of Labour Generally, in the EEA, men always hunted and women were the gatherers and child rearers. They spent most of their life pregnant or producing milk. If they did hunt, it would have reduced the group's reproductive success and it was important in avoiding starvation. Both women and men collected food, men hunted for it and women could grow and collect plants. Meat sharing hypothesis. The meat sharing hypothesis proposes an implication for the division of labour. When early humans went from vegetarian to a meat diet, men became hunters because of the selective pressures. Men may have used meat to attract female attention, and this still occurs in some modern hunter gatherer societies today. A criticism of the division of labour approach is that it is too determinist. It suggests that our genes specify how we behave. For example, genes specify that men naturally take the hunter role whilst women long to care for their children. The determinist explanation doesn't consider the view of evolutionary psychologists. Their view is that genes only predispose us to behave in certain ways rather than determining that. Mate choices Mate choices are related to adaptive reproductive strategies. According to evolutionary psychologists, men look for youth features such as physical attractiveness, red lips, smooth skin. These are indicators of fertility and health. Females look for resources, ensuring the survival of any offspring. Support for the sex differences in mate choice comes from BUS. Bus conducted a study on what males and females look for in a marriage partner in 37 different cultures. Women looked for good financial prospects and men with resources to provide for children. Men looked for physical attractiveness as it was an indicator of fertility and health and also for younger women. Further support for sex choice comes from Wayne Forth and Dunbar. They did a content analysis of personal ads and they find that males were more likely to specify they're looking for physical attractiveness and females were more likely to advertise physical attractiveness. This supports the evolutionary theory that males are more interested in physical attractiveness in potential partners. The empathising systematising theory. Research has shown that women are better at empathising, which is understanding others' thoughts and feelings, whereas men are better at systematising, which is understanding and building systems. The ES theory may be a result of selection pressures for men who would hunt and females who are better at relating to children. These gender differences are adaptations. The systematising quote questionnaire supports the ES theory. It was made to demonstrate the different cognitive styles of males and females. 83% of males are systematizers. The similar proportion of women are sympathizers. Studies of autism also support the ES theory. Autism could be seen as an example of an extreme male brain, which excels at systematizing but lacks the ability to empathize. Autism is characterised by difficulties with social communication and relationships, which is strongly linked with inability to understand others' feelings. So they score high in systematising, so it's a male brain. The tend and befriend theory. Women are more focused on interpersonal concerns due to the different challenges faced in the EEA. Ancestral males dealt with threats from animals with the fight-or-flight response. Females, as primary caregivers, protect themselves and their young, which leads to the tend and befriend response. Men are therefore more likely to become defensive. Support for the tend or befriend response comes from Ennis et al. He took the levels of cortisol a week before the exam, which was low stress, and immediately before the exam, which was high stress. Males had a significant increase in cortisol, and females had a significant decrease over this time. Men responded to the stressors with the fight-or-flight response, whereas women responded with decreased anxiety, which tends to make them more sociable.
Further support for the tendon befriend response comes from cross-cultural studies. However, the main difficulty with cross-cultural studies is the degree to which the data collected actually represents the behaviour of people from different cultures. E.g. there may be social desirability in the questionnaires and some questions may not apply to other cultures, which means it would be invalid due to imposed ethics.